All right, welcome everybody to Now That's Debatable. Got another episode coming at you today. We're live. We have two guests on today. We got TJ and we got King Oglesby. We're going to call him King probably just for safety of time, if that's all right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get over to our main page with all of our faces on it. And in a second, I'm probably going to disappear because my CPU is going to crash if I don't. But let's get our faces up on the screen. We'll have chat up on the screen. We'll be monitoring that if you have any questions, comments. Today we're going to be talking cultural appropriation. So, without further ado, TJ, if you could get us started with some Relic Media info, and then we'll take off in discussion. Sure. So, first of all, we're going by Terrell, not TJ. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm TJ to y'all because y'all family, but everybody else is Terrell. So, Heard that. <laughs> um, but but yeah, no, it's um, but yeah, Relic Media is the company. Um, got a bunch of different podcasts. I got a new one about to start. I'm really excited about. Well, we'll be more on that later. Um, uh, ReliqMedia.com is the website. Uh, we are about to go ahead and get the Facebook, the Instagram. Actually, that Instagram is Relic Media too. Uh, TikTok is Relic Media. Everything's Relic Media. Uh, Facebook will soon, as of probably as of tomorrow, uh, there will be a Relic Media page on Facebook as well. And Relic is spelled R E L L I C. By the way, I know, know a couple of people who were talking about they were searching it and they couldn't find it, but that's because they were putting one L in there, so it's two L's. So. But yeah, there we go. That's Relic Media. Oh, so uh, the topic today was uh, cultural appropriation. And so first, I, I, I like to have my guests give, I guess, what your understanding of cultural appropriation is. And I, I can give you mine or I can give you mine first. It doesn't matter to me. Let me go first. OK. Uh, a good example of corporate, uh, cultural appropriation is that damn Avatar movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, no cultural pro- co- cultural appropriation to me is say someone benefiting off of a culture that they was they didn't experience or they didn't grow up in. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I can give a lot of examples of that, um, okay. but um, that's just pretty much my basic definition. All right, what about you, T? Um, I, I agree actually with Chris. Okay. Um, you know, it's people just people trying to um uh take parts of cultures that they're not from and benefiting from it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, especially um I don't know if I want to throw any names out there. No, <laughs> throw them. Throw them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there. <laughs> but you know, there there are some people that I definitely believe are um culture vultures or they uh they they have stepped outside of their culture to benefit from other cultures mm-hmm. okay so, yeah I'll, I'll just keep it there instead of saying names so all right <laughs> all right so i mean that, that that is roughly what my definition of uh, cultural appropriation would be i guess like a uh, um, adopting or uh borrowing some sort of part of a culture that I guess you that wasn't initially yours. So mm-hmm. how about this? So when when we when we talk about like a culture that belongs to an individual, like what makes what makes a person part of that culture? Is it like uh, like their race or where they're born? For instance, like so, like like I'm I'm likely uh, West African, right? I mean I haven't done like a DNA test. I mean, but I mean, look at me. Right. And so, right. Right. But like, I, I, I don't know any, I don't know anything about the, the culture. Right. And I could probably tell you more about, um, you know, like Southern white culture more than I could tell you about um, West African culture. Like, am, am I culturally appropriating or what, what makes it, what makes the culture tied to a specific individual? Um, I, I think that all of those things, I think, you know, where you're from, where mm-hmm. you grow up, you know what? See now, I think that a lot of people they look at race, and I, I, I think that a lot of people think that race and culture are interchangeable. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that's always the case. For instance, and I am going to throw a name out this time, but I'm not tearing them down. So okay, I believe Eminem is part of the hip hop culture. Yeah, I agree. 
you know so i don't really i don't want it to get confused with a race thing mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know so but i do think that some people i, th I think that when you do start looking at certain well, things how about this what gives a person a right to use a culture um being from that culture being a part of that culture okay what about if they just studied the culture like some say somebody that never grew up in the culture mm -hmm. but they studied the culture like say say like say because when you when you think about culture you think about a group of people that just pretty much live a certain type of way or a certain way of life like a religion could be considered a culture right. or a music can yeah. be considered a culture or like the food culture or like the food culture in certain cities and things of that nature you know what i mean so like in dc like i'm from i'm originally from dc so in dc our culture is chicken with mumble sauce you know what i mean things of that mm -hmm. nature so you know that's that's part of the culture so if you grew up around that but i feel like if you studied the culture if you studied the culture you know um um you could probably be considered within that culture if it's something that you study gotcha so, like, who would you think uh like what's like some of the problems you think with uh cultural uh, appropriation like i i imagine you don't think it's a good thing right it all depends because me i have a i have a different definition i have a different feeling about cultural appropriation i okay. feel like um how do i want to put i, I, I don't want to put this in a bad way <laughs> but i say say let's take let's take hip-hop you mm -hmm. know what i mean you have people that been, you have older uh rappers that's been in hip-hop for years that don't necessarily consider the new age hip-hop the trap music and all that part of the culture you mm -hmm. understand what i'm saying but someone who doesn't someone who doesn't necessarily um listen to rap may put all of that all in one you know in all may put all of it together as yeah. far as part of the culture so it all depends it's all depends on your individual inter um interpretation of what culture is and um depending on what type of culture that you're involved in if you understand what i'm saying you know so sure so like um like i, I could i saw a video not too long ago it was a so some japanese um rapper right he had his hair mm -hmm. corn road he had a grill in his mouth and like mm -hmm. he was like in front of a chevy impala mm -hmm. and it was like um um like japanese girls you know like like shaking like I mean, it was like it was <laughs> you would think i mean you think they had like copied and pasted like a stereotypical uh -huh. rap video like the, you would say that's like culture that's hard, hardcore cultural appropriation right um uh, i wouldn't say because he may grew up listening to rap his whole life okay. he may live in he may live in a hood or um in an urban neighborhood you know um in wherever he lives at so mm -hmm. if it's one thing like say i don't want to call out names either but i know we all know a few groups or a few rappers or a few r&b singers or rock and roll bands that have took part in the hip hop culture and mm. or certain DJs. Been, yeah or benefit off benefited off of and we know we necessarily and we know they didn't necessarily grow up in that culture you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it all depends let's say let's put a reversal on it let's say mm -hmm. like um and i hate to go back to more like uh i hate to go back to back in the early times of uh, slavery and things of that nature but a lot of the things that we adopted from um the slave masters or the slave owners would that will be would we be considered culture vultures in that sense because we benefited off a lot of things from them as well even though we taught them a lot of things we also benefited from a lot of things in them as well like even yeah. in this day of time even this day of time let's say the stock market let's say um sure. but i mean I, I would saying? say yeah like I, for me like um i guess cult uh cultural appropriation like and this like demands some sort of i guess input from the individual like in order for me to appropriate a culture i have to be taking it for me slavery is a little different because like i was like or i guess my ancestors were kidnapped and then forced into the culture yeah right so like the culture more appropriated me than i appropriated yeah, it i agree I, I would say yeah so like um would you how about this because uh i don't you hadn't mentioned music right and so it, it if you if you grew up in the area like if you grew up in that culture then you have some sort of i guess you have some, some more of a right to it than someone who didn't 
exactly. like do you apply this to subcultures too like for instance like let's say like like asap rocky he, i think he's from new york like you listen to his music is very texas oriented mm -hmm. is that cultural uh, appropriation i don't know i think I think there's a difference between cultural appropriation and influence. Exactly. Okay. exactly. All right. Exactly. That's yeah. that's what I was looking for. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. all right. I would agree. So, like, the, the line is like really gray then. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. Like, so um, outside of music, like, we, do we apply it to uh, like like inventions and stuff like that too? Name an invention. I don't know. Uh, Headphones. I'm wearing headphones. I don't I have no idea who invented headphones. Dr. Dre. <laughs> <laughs> um. So okay, actually, since I brought up Dre, mm -hmm. are you in that example? Are you saying that Dre could be the could be culturally appropriating headphones because he came out with his own line, even though he didn't create it? Well, he could, yeah. Because if you say, like, so if you say that a, an an invention um, belongs to a specific culture because it was made by a person who belonged in the culture, then to me, like, you you run into like a lot of problems. I think like, okay. like for instance, right? So like, I have a a, 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 um, a black person is driving a, a Lexus, right? That's, mm -hmm. a, that's, a, that's a Japanese car. Mm -hmm. So I to to avoid cultural appropriation. He might have to um, give up that car to a Japanese person, mm -hmm. but but then hold up, wait a minute. Japanese didn't invent cars, right? They're they're culturally appropriating from the Germans, right? But wait a minute. The, the car said the Germans invented. Did it have a wheel? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that came from the Mesopotamians. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so, he, like to to avoid cultural appropriation, like it's. It's, to me, it's just unavoidable. Like there's like just about everything that we have. There's so many. Uh, it came from different parts of the world. I think the computer that we're using right now, the computers were invented by Englishmen. Um, out al the algorithms that computers use was invented by uh, Muslims. You know, I mean, it's, it's a. It, it, it gets it, to me. It gets to this unworkable model. Whereas we're going to, if we to avoid cultural appropriation, we're going to be limited to like. You know, spears and rocks and stuff. Well, like see, we but, build up of each other. See, but when when you when you think of you have to go back to the roots of of the what the act what it actually means. Mm -hmm. Culture appropriation is more of when you take something from you take something from a certain group that's only been known for that. You know the the things that they do. You know whether it's food, whether it's the way they dress, whether mm -hmm. it's the way they talk, anything like that. You didn't grow up in that. You take from that and you benefit off of it and you don't give them the recognition for that's where you got it from. Like, say, um, let, let, let me give you an example. Say like Elvis. Mm -hmm. We all know that Elvis took someone else's singing style, his songs, his whole makeup. That, that That's something that I consider cultural appropriation right there. Because mm -hmm. the, the guy that he took it from never got, he never benefited from it the way Elvis benefited from it. Yeah, he I'm, never gave I, him the recognition for that. Oh, yeah, so that would be a perfect example of what okay. of what cultural appropriation is. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. So, like, so as, as long as you give recognition, you could you could appropriate, or it wouldn't be appropriation. Yeah, it wouldn't. It would be considered appropriation because you're given recognition. Okay. So, like, so, uh, for instance, like, w what if, uh, like, you're like the Japanese when, when a Japanese person is in a car, he has no idea where cars came from. Like he doesn't care. Is he culturally appropriating? Because he's he not. He obviously can't give recognition because he doesn't even know. Um, I wouldn't say that because even if the Japanese invented a car, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they didn't sell it to just only Japanese from the beginning. You understand? I'm saying I'm pretty sure when when the cars were invented, every culture benefited from that from the beginning. If you were able to afford a car and buy mm -hmm. one. You know what I mean? Then everybody benefited from that. So it wasn't a, a specific group of people unless it was just the rich that were able to afford the car. That's that's a whole different thing right there. I'm speaking well, more can I, of can I ask a question there? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so you said in that specific instance, like <laughs> it, let's assume Japanese and into the car, even though we know let's you know, for the sake of the argument. Uh -huh. Um, but you said they didn't sell it to only Japanese people, so other cultures benefited. 
Yeah. So if being beneficial is part of the requirements to avoid cultural appropriation, then what about people like Elvis, who you would say their music was beneficial to people who listened to it to inspire other forms of music and or dance, etc. So now you're benefiting other cultures that aren't just the quote unquote king of rock and roll. Uh, that style, you would say it was beneficial to develop music and further music to additional styles, dances, etc. So because it benefited more than just the culture of what Elvis grew up in, would it still still be cultural appropriation because it didn't work that way with the car right no that wouldn't necessarily be the same thing because that style and that brand of music had been around for decades before elvis even heard it or listened to it or stole it or whatever you know I me mean, how sure, he sure but i mean car, cars had been around for 40 years before toyota came around but we we use the example of in, the invention of the car so the beginning of it right you but elvis didn't so claim it, to invent music no, no, we're not saying he invented, but that style of music, he I, took. I don't think he claimed the style either. I mean, he just. Oh, have you it. watched that new Elvis movie? <laughs> uh, I didn't watch the biography because I'm not that interested in Elvis as a, a oh, person. I, I'm not uh, either, but, but I, I'll I like say like, <laughs> from from historical knowledge, my grandmother was a huge Elvis fan, and I'll say like mm -hmm. he wasn't the self-proclaimed king of rock and roll. That wasn't a, a, a like a title kind of given to him, and mm -hmm. mostly closer to his death, but like. I I don't think Elvis would ever. I mean, I could be wrong. He could have said he, you know, invented this whole style. Um, but I, I mean, just because someone does it differently or gets recognition for it doesn't mean they're claiming invention. How, how about this? So you had when I when I had brought up about um, a Japanese making a car, not knowing that it was in, uh, invented by Germans, and you said it wasn't wouldn't be cult, cultural appropriation because it was available to various different cultures, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so oh, when Elvis made music, his music was available to everybody. Like a black person could easily just go and buy the album, right? Just like a a black person could go buy a Japanese car. Yeah, but when he made the music and he made billions off the music, mm -hmm. who, what black people benefited from that besides listening to it and maybe feeling good about it or anything like that? I'm talking about the inventor, like the inventor of the culture, the inventor of that culture. We mm -hmm. know he didn't come from that culture. You know, well, so like, so we, we know he didn't grow up in that culture of, of style of music, but he benefited widely from it once he started using that style. He didn't, he, if you watch, if you know anything about Elvis, he didn't even start off doing that type of music. Once he heard that kind of music, he switched his whole thing up. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, he started out as a, a gospel choir singer. Exactly. And had he went back and reached back the guy that he heard the, the music from or, um, the one that he stole the, the music from or the people that he stole the music from and brought them with him and let them teach him that style or or they did that style together, that would be a whole different thing. Then it wouldn't be appropriation. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. So so about with, with the Japanese example, so like if, if they sell a car like to, to the cultures at, at, at large, largely the Japanese are benefiting, right? Because they're, they're hoarding all that cash mm -hmm. just like elvis will be benefiting like to me it, it seems like a uh equal relationship like i, I don't see any difference did you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah so like how was elvis culturally appropriating but the japanese car makers aren't did the japanese car makers invent the car no they did not germans invented the car Okay, so when Germans invented the car, were they the only ones driving the car? Yeah, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, My understanding of cultural appropriation is, is is different. You know what I mean? So, but I'm just going by the actual definition, the sure. root of, of of what the definition of it is. So sure. something I wanted to address kind of early on, if I could, and that was, yeah. and it's something that was just mentioned again in the the kind of previous back and forth, was that. The idea of cultural appropriation, uh, given that the name culture is in the title, it's it's really hard to buckle down or tie down to an individual. Right? That's true. So that's we're, true. we're saying like, although like you technically may have one person that's an individual inventor of the automobile as we know it, 
like you kind of have to go back to Chevrolet's point where it's you know what about they didn't invent the wheel they probably didn't they did definitely didn't invent the engine they didn't invent all the things that went into the car they were just the first one to put it together in that particular order right yeah rubber so like all these things kind of go into place because people get their ideas from the people around them and they put their ideas together in a, in a, in a particular way from the people around them so a lot of times when people refer to like culture itself, they, they mean one of three things. They mean like the way of life, the ideologies or the cultural like proponents. And what I mean by that is, for instance, you might say that that like, culture is responsible for a particular style of music. That's a mm -hmm. proponent and a, and, and a product of that culture. But in and of itself, you wouldn't be able to single down a, an individual by any means that was responsible like for instance you could say there's no one person that came up with the idea of rock and roll all right you, so you, what do you consider what do you consider the amish uh a religious order or group would they also be considered a culture do they have their own I, culture i would say they have a culture i would say the amish isn't a culture i would say the amish have a culture and that you could say that if you grew up amish that could be your culture but well, and culture I would say Amish is probably referring more to their religion than their culture religion. itself is defined by a group of people who study or live a certain ideology or certain by a certain um, group of principles and in a certain manner way. So they would be considered a culture if you go by the definition, correct? Uh, well, so, I mean, that's a pretty niche definition of culture in that sense because you said like people have to live a certain way but like for instance i would say that in any given methodology or when we're talking about like the proponents or the the out the outcome of a culture for instance like you would say something that the amish do pretty particularly well is they avoid like like electronics right but they like let's say hypothetically they invented the butter churn because that's a pretty a typical association with like Amish people mm -hmm. they're always doing things by hand or let's say yeah. they invented that well you wouldn't say that that butter churn was their culture you wouldn't say that like you would say it's part of it's an invention that came about because of their way of life right it's not their way of life it's not their ideology it's their ideologies that basically pushed them in the direction to invent the butter churn well actually if they rather if it's their tradition to churn butter as opposed to going to buy it at the store that would be their culture well it's just because a small part of their culture right? yeah 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 i'm just i'm just using that example that is specifically what that group of people or that group of of of, of religion or whatever you call them that's what they do that's their thing Right, and if I, if I churn butter because I didn't want to go to the store because I had a dairy farm, would I be culturally appropriating the Amish? No, no, I don't consider that as cultural appropriation, no. Okay, so kind of, like, kind of going back to the, like, the original like argument of like Japanese people with cars or Elvis Presley with music, like just because he does something that other people also do, or just because the Japanese did something that other people also did, what makes that cultural appropriation versus me churning my own butter doesn't make me culturally appropriating the Amish. You know what? I think, I think that we have to look at the, the, the specifics. We have to specifically like pinpoint exactly what's going on. So for instance, let's go back to the, I want to make a comparison with the car, the car analogy and, and music. Elvis. So okay. cars, when cars were created, mm -hmm. let's say, okay, so the Germans created it. <clears throat> they, when they created it, and when actually with the creation of anything, what's the purpose? What is the driving? Well, what is the driving force behind your creation? Am I creating something for my culture to take pride in my culture? Mm -hmm. When they created the car, did they create it for the purpose of it being for their culture? Mm -hmm. Probably right. not. Right. They probably created it for the purpose of transportation, of course, but then they want to see it as, as a monetary thing. So it's like, you know what? If the Japanese want to buy it, if the and you know benefit of then whatever, great. So when it comes to music, when music was created, was it created for the purpose of one particular culture? Probably not. But the different types of music. 
So when we talk about hip hop, especially when we go to like the 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 reason, like so we're looking at breakdancing, lyricism, um, graffiti, um, all of the elements, all of the elements of, of hip hop, right? It's a culture thing. Mm-hmm. It's a culture thing. So for somebody to come into the culture and the things that we hold dear to us, these things mean something to us because hip hop was created during a time when black people were trying to find a way out. Exactly. You know, so um, I tell you what, we can go even deeper. Let's go to when the slaves were making, were, were, were singing songs. Mm-hmm. Right. So if somebody from any other culture was to come in and start taking these old Negro spirituals and start making money off of it, that's cultural appropriation. Exactly. That so can was I, not. Can, I, can I like really nitpick here? Because I'm a I'm yeah. a I'm a jerk most of the time. Let's uh, do it. Let's yeah, do cool. it. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna really be a jerk here. So the it. Negro spirituals, uh, which are sung mm-hmm. by slaves, were essentially like oftentimes directions on like escaping to things like the Underground Railroad, etc. Yeah, right. However, yeah. uh, they got their tunes and their hymns from being forced to attend white church that was forced Christianity on slaves. So weren't they just mm-hmm. culturally appropriating their hymns? Also, what the religion was about, like it's the Christian hymnals, like mm-hmm. they that that was came from Europe. Yeah, I mean, like, no, it's... <laughs> I, I see that, but you know what, though, I see that as you know what you gave me. Um, you, I'm going to take what you gave me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to make it better so that I can get out of here. Look, right, desperate so Elvis... time for desperate measures. <laughs> yeah. so, like, so, you know what I'm saying? He took what some guy gave him, whether he asked for it or not, and then made it his well, own, hold on, hold and then I'm got sorry. out of his I'm situation. Sorry. Let me take that back. I'm I mean, sorry. Elvis was not, poor. Not, not what was given to them, what was forced upon them. Forced upon them. <laughs> and, okay. and now, so 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 this is what I all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn into MacGyver here. I'm gonna take what I have and I'm gonna figure out a way out of here. You know, so that that's what that was. But see, the thing is, you you know them. I didn't mean you, but them back then. You know, <laughs> you, you, you shackled me, you caged me. You're trying to force me. <laughs> To, to be a slave and now desperate mm-hmm. times call for desperate measures. Mm-hmm. How can I get out of here? How do I fight my way out of the corner? Yeah, okay, so, cool. Mean, like, well, what about like Elvis in his situation where he grew up poor, he was in the army, he left that, he had a brother, his family wasn't very wealthy. He used that music and opportunity to grow into a multi millionaire star, right? I mean, like yeah. to me, mm-hmm. it, it's a change of circumstance that, and, I mean, although he wasn't being forced to be poor by any means, uh, mm-hmm. he was. I mean, born into a poor family. He was like, obviously grew up in the environment in which he didn't have a lot of money. He wasn't born to like a uber wealthy family, et cetera. And he took that opportunity and MacGyvered his way into one of the most well-known singers of all time. To me, you're, you're drawing d- direct parallels on most. And look, and he, that's exactly what he did. And cool. Look, the game is the game. You won Elvis. You did it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, I mean but we're still going to call it what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, why, why can't we call like Negro spirituals cultural appropriation of like white Christian hymnals then? Um, because we okay still, because <laughs> I mean, we still, we I, still I Negro have no desire to do so and I don't care. But we're we playing the guards. If, we sung Negro spirituals if you call it that. I don't, I don't like to call it that. But we sung way before we came to this land. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I so, mean, like, so obviously, that if we're going to go back you know, to the mention of singing, you'd probably say, yeah, like, yeah, Neanderthals, yeah. probably yeah. <laughs> first developing language. But, yeah. I mean, like, like that's that's kind of where, like, Triple A was going earlier, is just how far are we willing to go and how far are we willing we're, to go back? Because we're, we're borrowing yeah. words or language. Me, when I speak on this, and like I said, I have a total different understanding of cult- cultural appropriation. Me, when I speak on it by definition, and I try to keep it simple like that, is... If you know something that's been that was only known or studied or practiced by a certain group of people, mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying? By a certain group of people, and you come and you steal that idea, or you come and you adapt that idea. You didn't grow up in it. You didn't. You didn't. Know, but you solely took that idea just to benefit off of it, or you solely characterized, or you solely. Um, Industrialized, whatever, whatever you want to call, whatever you did to benefit off of it, 
That is cultural appropriation. How about because is it grow- always negative? Money. No, 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 no. It's not always negative because a lot of things I, that I was people just kind of curious where you stole that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things like a lot of things that people and et cetera, like straight up stolen from other. Well, cultures. I said industrialized. I said yeah, exactly. You but know, like man, the but, pro- but, mass production of medications and things like that, you would say yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. probably, probably culturally appropriate. I just said that as used as as examples, but sure. If you say you and a, and a few of your friends. Y'all invented a game. Y'all this the game that just y'all play. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I see y'all playing the game. I come. I don't even ask y'all to teach me the game. You know I, mean? I don't come to play the game with you. Hey, uh, like Kingo, you, you come. You coming in? Uh, kind of broken. It's probably my processor. Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm gonna you... turn my camera off for now. If it okay. speeds up, I'll catch back up. But can you hear me now? Can you hear me? You get everything good? Uh, maybe uh, it is. Uh, she's still so <laughs> robotic. Is it? Is it me? I think it's you. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, yeah, you're a little choppy, Chris. Well, it looks good on my end. I don't know. Nah, we just roll with it. Man. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's still choppy now. Yeah, it's, it's still it's still pretty choppy. Maybe if you yeah. can, uh, like, jump out and try to rejoin. Let me, let me do that. Or maybe turn it off the camera and turn it back on. Yeah, something like that. So there's not any dead air. Um, okay, he's back. Cool, cool. How's that? All right, much better. Yeah. So, b- go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, like, say, um, you and your friends had a game, y'all invented the game, mm-hmm. and only y'all played the game for years. Only y'all played the game. I'm walking by, I see y'all playing the game. I don't come and ask you how to play the game, I don't come play the game with you. I just sit back and observe y'all playing this game, and I learn the game just from sitting back and observing. Mm-hmm. I take the game, and I go industrialize the game. I go in, uh, um, just it, almost like I invented it and don't give you no recognition for it. You understand what I'm saying? That itself is cultural appropriate. It's cultural appropriation. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I, well that and that's the the, they were, but they were just playing the game. They, they, they didn't invent the game, right? Because no, I'm saying they, they, I'm the saying they invented the game. Oh. I'm saying they invented the game. They well, played me, it. So, so for me, so for in that instance, if they invented the game, then they have like some sort of like intellectual property in it. Just like if, like if I write a song, you exactly. know, I have yeah. So I have a yeah. right to the song, but my exactly. culture, my culture doesn't have a right to my song. That's no, just me. That, so that, that group of people or that group of friends, that game that y'all play every day, that mm-hmm. is your culture. That is considered culture. It, that, Look, that is. So, so you think by 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 just being born in a certain place that gives you a right to intellectual property? No, no. Or okay, so no, that's no, what it sounds no, like. You're not saying. just being born. No, not just being. Okay, born. Well, we're just being in a culture, right? So, like, I, I'm in, yeah. I'm in a culture, and like, I didn't choose my culture. It was just, it just, I was thrown into it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, so you're, you're saying because of the culture that I had no um part in choosing i have a right to certain um concepts like such certain forms of music certain forms of art etc yes i believe so yes okay so huh that that seems strange to me and and, and it could seem almost as it it could be like in a way that's in it's kind of bigoted Right, because now we're saying because of because of who people are, they get certain rights to certain um, pieces of art or or uh, um, intellectual property, even though they had no part in creating it. Like for instance, like like I I don't have any contributions to hip hop, right? But to say that I have a more of a right to it than someone in China, to me is it's kind of like a uh, it's nonsense. You know, like it, I, I don't see how that follows. I'm going to I'm going to read you the definition of appropriation. OK, it says the action of taking something from one's for one's own use, typically without the owner's permission. Yeah, but so 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 when we talk about ownership, like how like I don't own hip hop, like I haven't made any contributions to it. I like to mm-hmm. listen to it, all that type of stuff. But that's it. Uh huh. So what I'm saying is like, so I, I don't have, how does me being born in a certain place and having certain, you know, biological properties give me some sort of ownership to, to something? 
I'm not saying to necessarily give you any ownership, but if mm -hmm. you grew up in a certain culture, you are part of that culture. Sure. We're talking about something that you're part of because you grew up in that, you grew up around it, you were taught that. Um, and so you are part of that culture. So you kind of, I want to say, have can claim ownership to that culture. But you, you can claim it, but do you, do you, I mean, anybody can claim ownership to any culture. I mean, but like, what what gives well, culture is not something that someone right. individually owns themselves it has to be a, a specific group of people that sure, study but, or experience or anything like that so it's sure, not but, we, but, we but, can't but, say ownership sure but we're not talking about the entire culture we're talking about like specific parts right yeah. so like for instance let's like like rap music right it's, let's talk about like an asian dude i don't know if you remember jen uh, rough riders yes i do so, so, yeah you do, do. So from china yeah and he starts rapping right so like he's not taking the whole culture just like a one part mm -hmm. right so this is where i was kind of pointing out earlier it's just like the 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 way of life the the ideologies and then like a pr product of culture right mm -hmm. and this specific example you'd say jen was taking a product of the culture not the culture itself right <clears throat> yeah because when you look at hip-hop culture hip-hop culture is not just rap it's like terrell said graffiti it's the dance it's the art it's the um, the way you talk, it's the slang, it's the way you dress, it's that that all is combined to is, is considered a hip hop culture. And of course, it's more people that's getting into the culture and adding on and uh, improving on it and things of that nature. Um, but the the you have to look at the core elements of it, um, which are those five things that I named, which, which would be considered the culture. You understand what I'm saying? I think that so you got people you got people in the hip hop culture that rap that don't dance. But they are part of the culture because they do that one specific thing, that one specific element that's within the culture. You understand what I'm saying? So that's that's how it's defined. I think that that what it is is when something is intended for a culture and then other people start to benefit from it when it's not intended for you. That's what the problem is. For instance, exactly. I'll tell you what, let's take it to gang culture. Mm -hmm. So you have bloods, right? If somebody who is not a blood starts walking into a some area where there are no gangs and nobody knows anything about it but they start throwing up blood signs and mm -hmm. wearing all red and then trying to capitalize off of gang culture or blood culture that's cultural appropriation that's a great that's a great example that's a great example so you said if a blood walks into like a crypt community then that that'll be cultural appropriation no, no, that's dangerous. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's suicide. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's saying no. that if he's saying that if someone oh, no. who is not a peer, yeah, yeah, you were frozen for a second. Yeah. Okay. He's saying yeah. someone that is yeah. not a blood, if he was to walk mm -hmm. into a blood neighborhood and start throwing up gang signs and start waving a flag, that's and he's not necessarily part of that culture, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That that's mm -hmm. that's cultural appropriation. Or go anywhere, even go into a neighborhood that's not a blood. Like it could be a neighborhood that has not, absolutely nothing to do with gangs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they start throwing up blood signs and they're wearing all red and they're claiming blood and they're yelling Sue Whoop and all of that stuff. So, yeah. So, no. so, so now we're getting to kind of like subcultures, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like, I mean, um, gang culture, like, especially like modern gang culture, mm -hmm. like, in a way, is a subculture of hip hop, in a way. So like although gangs were came around bef before you know hip hop, but but, but it, at least the the way they exist today is, is kind of a subculture. I, I'm more, I, would, I would say hip hop is more part of the gang culture than it is uh, vice versa. Okay. Than it is the other. So way so but now if we're going to talk about subcultures, so th th this were it, it kind of goes back to what I was asking earlier about ASAP Rocky, mm -hmm. who's from New York but have a Houston style, mm -hmm. or J Cole, he's from North Carolina, and, you know. Uh, when he first came out, like we thought he was like from New York or something, right? So like that's cultural appropriation as well. No, I think that's influence. Okay, so couldn't this be influence? No, because you're not a blood and you're doing blood but, things like this. But, but, but it, it's influencing. I'm like, I mean, I don't see how. Because okay. you, you know the difference is, mm -hmm. we listen to J Cole, we listen to ASAP Rocky, and yeah. nobody says, "Hey, you're wrong for rapping like that." If somebody goes into a neighborhood and claims that they're a blood and mm -hmm. they're not a blood, they're going to bleed. I've even oh, I've sure. even seen I've even well, seen I've even seen the example um, 
put out there of cultural appropriation is a man dressing up as a female, like for jokes or for a movie or anything like that. You know what I mean? Not necessarily say a transgender or anything mm-hmm. like that, but just a guy. Like say um, when, um, what's his name? That did Mrs. Doubtfire or say uh, um, Tyler Perry. Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, Robin Williams, uh, rest, mm-hmm. is, rest in peace. And uh, Tyler Perry. I, I've seen people say that's considered cultural appropriation. Are you appropriating it's, women? Yes. Oh. Interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Is interesting. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Would you say all why not? Women why why, why wouldn't it be? Why why wouldn't it be? Because well, I if, say if, that if, women if a man culture. dresses up as a woman and he he doesn't necessarily identify himself as a woman, see it's different when you wanted to when you're. Uh, identify if you're part of the community and you identify as a woman, then that's what you identify as. If I'm a man and I identify as a man, but I dress up as a woman to make movies or to do music or to benefit solely off of that, that is cultural appropriation by the Who, definition. Whose culture is it appropriating? Women. <laughs> so women are a culture of themselves? Yes. You wouldn't consider are, women a culture? I, I mean, I would. I guess, no, I guess not. Because I think we're splitting hair. Generic, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty generic term to define culture. Because, I mean, women have. I'm just own, going like, by the. De- I'm just going by the definition. Well, I'm so going like, by the definition. How would you define culture to include women? Hey, sit down. What do you mean? Like, right can you give me a definition of culture? You don't believe that, that would encompass women have... all women? Of course, no, no. I'm saying culture, culture. Culture is a it's not a it's not related down to it's not doing it down to a specific group itself. Women themselves could be considered a culture because women themselves have a, a numerous amount of attributes and things that they do that men don't do, that men can't do. You understand what I'm saying? So that puts them in a certain group of people and I, or, or culture because you understand yeah, what I'm saying? No, because I can't. I can't come up with a generic enough definition of culture to define all women. And I don't that's think why you I can go, either. <laughs> that's why I go, but that's why I'm just going by the definition of culture itself. Well, well that's what because, I'm asking. Can you give a generic culture definition that would encompass all women? Like, can you make a, a generic definition broad enough of culture to incorporate every woman on the planet? Like a, a woman from New York like and a woman in Ethiopia and a woman, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, and, a, and a woman from like South Africa and a woman from yeah. like West Africa and a woman from like Luxembourg. I, I want um, you to, and women that can't have children, women that are only their chromosomes, you know, their chromosomes and having a vagina. No, that's not a culture. You said fact. a generic. That's the that's the yeah, basic, but, but that's, that's a biological basic, attribute. If, if that's the, that's the that's basic the generic grouping of women. I mean, Tyler Perry, Perry was totally, Tyler Perry, a vagina. I think Tyler Perry um, wasn't culturally appropriating because he didn't have a vagina. I mean, I don't. Well, I didn't see, but I don't. Uh, presumably, he was acting, he was he was acting like, like he had a vagina, but he was acting like he had a vagina. That's I mean, cultural appropriation. Would, I would say he was acting, acting like he had a vagina. <laughs> I would, wouldn't say he was acting like he had a vagina because he wasn't pretending to give birth to a child or anything. But well, I uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like the, the problem with that definition is it's so generic that you can't. I, I don't. I genuinely don't think you could come up with something that would incorporate every woman. And so, well, like, that, when, that, when you say culture, what, like, you have to go back to that original thing that I was talking about. You have ideologies, you have way mm-hmm. of life, and then you have proponents and, and productions of culture. So you would say that the culture of hip-hop produces hip-hop, right? But that's not mm-hmm. an ideology. That's an outcome of ideologies and the way of life and and whatnot. And the other thing I wanted to address is that we uh, a couple of times it's been said that, like, somebody's making something or doing something for the purpose of culture itself. And I mean, there may be a case in modernity in which, you know, someone is doing something specifically for culture, but more times than not, people are doing something because it's passion or desire or, uh, utility. For instance, like Germans didn't invent the car because it was going to benefit their culture. Germans invented the car because it was a better source of transportation. But you would say that, like, that also cars, benefited the culture. Uh, uh, no one's denying that, but you would never say that they invented it for the sole purpose of benefiting the culture. 
We don't know that. We don't know that specifically. So can we you don't say know that, that for any person or any individual or any group or any culture that's doing it strictly for this purpose and not to, for other purposes as well, like to make money or to become famous or because they really enjoy writing or because the government, they like the government, <laughs> the government invented crack to benefit their culture. The culture of the government. Yes. Wouldn't you just say that's the government, not a not a culture? The government is a culture. In what way? How can I put this? By definition, and I, I keep going back no, to the definition. No, no, because, because of, uh, uh, earlier you said like vagina is part of a culture. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, it is a, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I hate for you to just keep keep dancing around us, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, pushing you on the subject, but like, it seems like every time. Well, give me, I give, give me, a, yo, how, about, how about this? How about this? Let's narrow it down like this. Give me your, give me y'all's definition of culture. Okay, a shared. What is way your of definition life. of culture? That is the the easiest definition I can come up with. It's a shared way of life. Yeah. So like so, breathing air. So triple A. Because we I, all breathe air. I mean, we all breathe air, correct? Say that's part of human culture. Sure. We all we all breathe air, right? Yeah. So because we all breathe so air, is, we're all part humanity, of the culture. So humanity, humanity. So is humanity itself considered a culture? Because we all share. That's all we all share that way of life. Sure. And then you can break it down into exactly. smaller so, cultures, like the those, four of that's us. That's not that's males. not what we're saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just going by the definition you just gave me. You said a shared yeah. way of life, correct? Yeah. We yep, all I'm, breathe air as yep. human beings, as animals, as whatever breathes air. We all breathe air. So are we all part of the same culture because we all share that way of life? When we're talking about sharing the fact that we all breathe this air, yes, absolutely. We're all part of that culture. So you just gave me a generic definition of culture that didn't that didn't win your argument. That didn't win your argument. Like because you're the, saying the same thing. The problem thing is, I, I can't eliminate all women or include only women by saying that we all breathe there. So the gener most generic definition of culture being a way of life. If you're saying that you're defining culture as things that breathe air, then technically all animals, all humans, like anything living today, is part Amoeba. of the culture. But the problem is, you want to narrow it down to a more specific culture when you're talking about things like cultural appropriation, because you would say if culture is just all things that breathe air, no one can appropriate anything because the only thing we're talking about is breathing air. But I'm going by your definition. of well, what That's what I'm saying. Is. You asked for the most generic definition of culture. I'm saying it's no, a way I didn't ask life. for generic. I asked for your definition that's, of culture. I stand by it. It can be as specific or as narrow as you want to make it, but by you defining it as who people who breathe air, you're making it generic. When I say, oh, by the way, Tribolet and I grew up together. We grew up in a similar neighborhood to one another. Okay, well, unless you grew up in a neighborhood similar to ours, you don't share the same way of life that we do. Mm -hmm. But we both still breathe air. Do you consider a sorority a culture? I would say it's a subculture. Subculture. What makes it a subculture? It's part of a larger culture. What culture is the larger culture? I mean, there's a bunch of them depending on where you want to go, depending on yeah. the, like the sorority. Do but... they all do they all go by the same laws and bylaws? No. No. So they wouldn't be considered the same culture. Well, I mean, well, I would say call so, them subcultures. Yeah. That's so what... like, I guess like because when so I'm you're talking saying about... college is a, so you're saying college is a culture and a sorority is a subculture. I'm not even saying college itself it... is a culture. So it what? Is... So what if for it to be a sub, it has to derive from somewhere else? Where does a sorority? A subculture of of what other culture? What bigger culture? I would say probably originally when you'd have to go back to like where it originally came from, being like Greek like, mythology. Yeah, 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 like the not mythology, but the Greeks. But I mean, obviously, it's been it, manipulated also, and it's evolved since then. But also, subcultures doesn't have to be part of the same larger culture either. Yeah. No, what, no, what, then what makes it a sub? Well, it, I mean, means part of. More, sub more means part of. <laughs> well, yeah. So I mean, so like, so because when, when I talk about culture, I'm talking about, I guess, like more of like the like like the social behavior, the institutions, the way of living mm -hmm. for a group of people in a certain area, right? And so you get so you get um, a really small group in a really small area. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of similarities, and you get broader, 
and the a lot of similarities are still there, but now it's a little more different. And the broader you get, the more different it becomes. Mm -hmm. So you can so we we could talk about we could talk about DC culture, like specifically, mm -hmm. right? And so and then we could talk about like DC like natives culture versus like I guess the like more of like the professionals that just move into DC. I'm I'm right? glad you so just used that example. That's, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm gonna come back to that, but go ahead. Yeah. So then so, so then we can talk about DMV culture, right? Right. And and maybe that could include Baltimore. And right. And now we could just talk about culture on the on the east coast in the east coast, right? And so like that's what I'm saying. So there's a lot of similarities, but they the they, they tend to separate the mm -hmm. broader you get. And so, although the term culture and subculture are, are kind of ambiguous, but See, generally when we talk about subculture, we're, we're talking of, we're not talking about any sort of like people group or typically uh, getting just more restrictive. Yes. But like for, like, for instance, like when we talk about the, the Irish, I would call that a culture, right? When we talk a hip hop, I wouldn't say that that is the culture. I would say it's a subculture. A subculture of what? Probably well, music, but yeah, also well, other things. Or, or, or African American culture. I mean, that's a an African American culture is a subculture of American culture. And African. let's go back to let's go back to the example of DC, right? We yeah, know sure. that DC culture, go go music is part of DC culture. It's been part of DC culture from the beginning. Yep. Correct. Yep. Right. So if you go to say California. And someone is is the go go band in California. They didn't grow up in DC culture. They don't know anything about DC. Never been to DC, but they're benefiting off of go go music. That is culture appropriation in the defi by definition of the word. You understand? Would you say that's a negative you know cultural, cultural appropriation? No, I'm not saying anything is negative about it. I'm not saying it's negative, but so, I mean, like my cultural appropriation is, by the cultural appropriation by the definition. Cultural appropriation by the definition. Is defined in, in sort of a negative way when you say it. No, yeah, that's what I was asking. Is, is there yeah. a, is there a, a situation in which can you give me a, an example? Or you don't have to be super specific if you don't want. Mm -hmm. But a, an example in which cultural appropriation is negative. Like you can even say like the Elvis one if that's what you want to go to. That's fine. I'm just curious. Can you give a negative example of cultural appropriation? Let's say we can say we can we can stay with rap music with hip hop. Okay. Um. Of so course, you have some. Of course, you have some, of course, you have some. Rappers, of course, you have some rappers. Of course, you have some rappers. We have like. Of course, you have. Of course, you have some rappers that are that are making money from music, mm -hmm. but it's known. It's a known fact that all the record labels and all the bigger, all the record labels, all the distri distribution companies are not owned by the group of people that invented rap. Correct. Yes. <laughs> that is called the word. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is they are solely benefited off of something they didn't invent and they are okay. and they are and they are using that culture to benefit themselves more than it's benefiting the culture do you understand what i'm saying okay so that's how i see it that's that's how i see it so would you say that that person's culturally appropriating or that person's just like a business jerk because they're not <laughs> doing the music creation they're not contributing to the culture in any way they're just making money off of other people which i mean that's that's kind which of been called... the game for a long long time but True. it You're doesn't right. necessarily right. have to do with the culture you know what i'm saying You're like correct. so uh, how about this so like when, when a, a rapper he's in he's in the video he's rapping and he has a european car behind him like he has a maserati behind him uh-huh it's not cultural appropriation no i don't consider that I don't why not consider... Because that group or that the people that invented the car sold the car for their own benefit, not but for the benefit of that, that rapper. That's why he's rapping for his own benefit. For his own benefit. That's what I'm I, mean, like, I mean, a lot of times they literally saying they're doing it for their own benefit, so I can be rich and so all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, that, that's kind of where I was going earlier. It's, it's so rare that you would say that anyone's doing it specifically for the culture, or like although you'd probably have to ask each individual and each individual production. But if I sell you, if I, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, like, you have to do each individual and each individual production of that individual, plus all the people that went into it. Because I can like tell you for sure, if I was in an opportunity to make a billion dollars or however much Dr. Dre made off by selling beats to Apple, like, 
you know, I, I mean, chances are he's not doing that to benefit the culture of hip hop. Chances are he's doing that to benefit his wallet and his bank account. You know what I'm saying? Well, hold on. Let me stop you there. <laughs> Dr. Dre created beats because he, he wanted everybody. He bought beats, actually. He didn't invent them. Well, beats. he came up with the concept no, of. No, he didn't. The because what no, headphones. No, 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 no. With the concept of the beats itself for the sound of the beats because he wanted the consumer to hear what us rap i'm a rapper too so yeah. he wanted he wanted you all to hear what we hear when we're in the studio so when he we have studio the, headphones yeah pre, no he didn't, no, no, he didn't. The studio he didn't, headphones he, he, but he didn't he need equalizers concept, either Oof. he came up with the concept of wanting you all to hear what we hear when we're in the studio okay and and in the case of dr dre he did that to benefit whom or what See, but no, y'all y'all are talking him. about uh, okay, y'all are so talking like that's about, benefiting everybody. Y'all, y'all are right? individualists. Yes. Y'all y'all are talking about one individual person. I'm talking about culture. <laughs> Devon. But, but that's is what I'm saying. You can't separate people that specifically <laughs> live a certain way of life. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't You're, separate not, this. Like you, you have an invention that came out by a person, which although I would say Dr. Dre had almost zero input on uh, beats in general. If you look into the history a little bit, he didn't invent studio headphones. He didn't invent equalizers. He didn't do the sound production or the sound uh, evaluation of beats themselves. He wasn't the sound engineer on board. He didn't design the chips. Like there's a whole lot that went into it that Dr. Dre had nothing to do with. By all means, he still gets Did credit he steal for beats. the idea. Uh, I'm, nah, he, he did I he mean, steal the idea by by stealing the idea. You mean making studio headphones? Or selling studio headphones, or, or like you got to be more specific there. But I mean, but the people who who <laughs> invented it, the people who did all of the work, are allowing him to be the face because they know exactly. that that's how they're going to sell it. So what's because, the difference in that so, and Elvis Presley saying no, like be, all the because, people that invented they it is just going to be the face? No, because the people that invented Beats are benefiting or for using Dr. Dre as the face. And you would say it. that the he people, didn't take the it and use it for himself, where they did Elvis? not benefit off of it. So okay, how about this? So like, so re- remember, um, Migos, right? They made us. The, I think the song that made him famous was Versace, and they just kept saying that word over and over again, right? Versace, mm-hmm. Versace, Versace, right? So w- you wouldn't think that was culture appropriation, right? It didn't. It yeah. doesn't sound like you. Okay, so what if Versace put out a commercial and he had Migos in it, rapping, trying to sell their um, product? Or they're benefiting. They're benefiting each other. They're not taking. Um, his well, product and so using about, it just for their own benefit. So okay, so how about so how about this? So let's say so Elvis makes music, and then there's a black person that likes listening to Elvis, right? So there's a mutually beneficial relationship. You yeah, get the pleasure true. of Elvis's music, and let me Elvis let me read y'all the definition real quick. So okay. so just so our listeners have an have an, have an idea of what we talk about. Cultural appropriation by definition. Cultural appropriation is the inappropriate or unacknowledged adoption of an element or elements of one culture or identity by members of another culture. Ah, you choppy again, Chris. This be, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm talking too loud. Can you hear me? Yeah. You sound like a robot. Every time I read it, just I stop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think we're I think, all, I think all y'all, set on the definition of the cultural I, appropriation. I, 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 I think... I think this. Well, because, because, I'm going to say that because y'all keep going back to the thing. I keep telling you, cultural creation is something that is stolen without the other person that invented its permission. Okay, so can, and, can I and ask the, you a and that And that group of people are not benefiting from what was stolen or the culture that or the elements that were taken from them. Okay, so, so there, there, there was one people. black person that liked listening to Elvis music, right? So the culture would benefit. Well, I guess people, it, some some people would benefit, some black person would benefit if, if he liked Elvis, or if Elvis uh, took some also, of the money and then bought bought a um a biscuit from a black baker, right? There's he just order. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I'm so, so like, I mean, I mean, I, I, to go I, back to the Migos thing, actually, because you brought it up, like Migos mm-hmm. wasn't famous before Versace, right? Versace was a multi-billion-dollar brand. Would you say that Migos benefited off of Versace's culture? Like specifically because you're talking about like using big name brands and, and 
often known as expensive brands like Versace, that when you drop it in like music, you're doing it to like flaunt wealth, if you will. So in the to case be of Migos, before Migos got famous, dropping the name Versace over and over again, when you say that Migos benefited from Versace's well-known name and reputation for being an expensive brand, and Versace probably I, had nothing to do with it. They probably didn't I sign would, off on him using their brand. The, the reason why I wouldn't say that is because a lot of us that grew up in the hip-hop culture only know about Versace from hip-hop. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so, um, if, so if all, the only reason that the, the white people that grew up listening to Elvis knew about that style of music was because of Elvis, what's the difference? I don't understand what your question is. I don't understand. Well, you just said like, like for instance, black people or like certain people only knew about Versace, Versace in the, because in the listen to Migos because of yeah, Migos, but, right? But right. Like, Migos, it, no, well, Migos like, was it was rappers hip-hop, talking about Versace I mean, like, back it, in the in the in the early nineties. Listen, to sure. it was any rappers any talking about Versace, drop Versace or a, 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 another name brand, if you will. So, what's the difference? In Actually. That? You know what? Actually, actually, that wouldn't be cultural appropriation because Versace benefited from the rappers I dropping mean, they Versace. They definitely didn't at first because song. Versace was already a well-established brand, and Migos was a nobody. So, so he wasn't Versace, doing it to benefit Versace. They, did Versace create Versace only to for that culture? culture? Exactly. That's the question. Like that's the, what I'm saying. I can't because yeah, that's Versace. the thing. If it was only to benefit that particular culture, I mean, it's the, it's the now benefit, you have it's the you have an I would, I, I would say I would say yeah, it was only. But, I would say a, it was created to benefit the culture of the people that can afford it. I mean, like I, I'm, I'm just saying, it's the benefit of people's business. pockets. Like that's at the end of the day, is money makes the world go around. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, but, and, exactly. And I think that when we're talking about businesses. I think that things get a little funny when we're talking about cultural appropriation because if I if I create something, everybody can buy it. If I'm if I'm talking about I'm I'm creating something for the purpose of making money, everybody can buy that. I'm not I'm not doing that just for my culture. So mm-hmm. would you say it would be inappropriate for me to listen to hip hop music because I'm not part of the culture? Because Absolutely. No. The, no, okay, no. but like, wasn't it, wasn't it where you're saying like specifically it, it was made for the hip hop culture, right? So, no, I, I think how come I think everyone can't hip-hop. benefit from it? So because see, the thing is, hip hop was made for. Um, so when we talk about the the foundation of hip hop, a lot of it was built on lyricism. It was built on the struggle. It was built on um, you know trying to find a way out. Now that can apply to anybody. That can apply to any and everybody. So it's easy for anybody to just kind of latch on to, to the hip hop culture. That's why I so led off by saying Eminem. If I latch on to something that I identify with. You know, you know, you know, since we're sticking on hip hop, who's a perfect example of cultural appropriation in hip hop? Let's go Eminem. Do it. Vanilla Ice. It. No. It's fine. Oh, do it. No, 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 no. Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice. Yeah. <laughs> Vanilla Ice. Okay. I, I, think a, ice. I think a better example is maybe a Paul no, Wall. Vanilla Ice Paul is Wall. probably Paul, the best. Paul, Paul Wall, Wall legitimately sounds like a black guy. Little, little Paul Wall grew up. Paul Wall grew up in the culture. Vanilla uh, Ice did not grow up in the culture. Okay, okay, okay. All right, yeah, I'll give you that. Give Vanilla you that. Ice did not grow up in the culture. Like but what did he benefit off? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so 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 what do you mean like um like grow up in the culture like grow up around other people who listen to rap or. Like, cause he grew he up would, in a household of rappers, or yeah, because he grew up in Houston. Grew, 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 grew up listening to rap. Grew up listening to rap. How about that? Grew up listening to rap, knowing how to rap. Just that's that's the music that you generally listen to. Um, um, predom- that's the predominant music that you listen to. So I would say that yes. If you put if he predom- if you can show me where he predominantly listened to rap music before he started rapping. Then I would take that title. Or then I would take that title of, of culture appropriation, pro, culture appropriation away from him. But I, I like I, I try not to talk on anything that I didn't do the, do the history on. So I already know the history on Vanilla Ice. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's been documented. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so would you say that because Vanilla Ice culturally appropriated rap, uh, it was negative? That's a negative example of cultural appropriation. It, it it by definition it's a negative it's a negative de- thing. Well, uh, by definition. So earlier you're saying it's not always a negative thing, but now you're saying by definition it's negative. I get that there's a negative connotation, 
But there's something, there's difference, there's difference in being negatively compensated and being negative. So give me, you, give, give me a positive example of culture appropriation that was I, positive. Any time that someone took something else and it spread worldwide and that thing was positive or it impacted people in a positive way. You could go hip hop. Like you would say hip hop probably started in African American culture. But it has impacted so many more people than African Americans. Like it is a global phenomenon. And people benefit from it, whether it's monetarily, emotionally, or, you know, whatever you want to call it. They're benefiting across the world. And I have, again, I have less to do with the hip hop culture than Triple A over here. But I would say that I've listened to a lot of it and I've had songs that like felt like they were speaking directly to me and like they, I associated with some of the things that they said they were dealing with in that song. So that benefited me in that moment because it was an emotional connection that I had with this artist, but I have nothing to do with that culture. You know what I'm saying? You know, be, you know what would be a good example of cultural appropriation? Another example I want to say, let's, and since we, since we had, was talking about cars and stay, let's say Toyota. If you go back in the seventies and eighties, hip hop was around then, correct? Hip hop was around in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, they were not using hip hop music in their commercials. Now that hip hop has became as popular as it is, and they seem that they can benefit off of it, now you see hip hop music in every single Toyota commercial. Is it is? You understand what I'm saying? That is cultural Toyota, appropriation. Commercials. That is cultural yeah. appropriation by definition. Well, so, is it though? Because it just seems like that's a marketing strategy. Well, two things can be true. That's yeah, so, true. I, I mean, yeah. like, so it seems like. Obviously, this person, for instance, like if you pulled up a specific Toyota commercial, let's just say hypothetically, some famous rapper, look Drake, he's like super popular. Let's say Drake did a song that they used on a Toyota commercial. Don't you think Drake got paid for it? Yeah, but yeah, did and they, didn't Drake benefit off of it? Yes. Yeah. And didn't Drake he may have, yeah. benefit off of it because Drake makes money and then he uses that to produce more songs that also go into the culture of hip hop. And yeah, I'm pretty sure Toyota. I'm pretty sure Toyota. Like what I'm saying, like what I'm I'm saying sure is, Toyota in your example, it off of it's not just Toyota benefiting. Is. Toyota right, but, is not the but only beneficiary. That, that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that Toyota isn't isn't uh, culturally appropriating. You know, hip hop. They well, still I'm just are. Saying, like, it's it's just a negative Drake, connotation to say that like Drake, cultural appropriation happened, but in that instance, Drake probably made a ton of money. So like, yeah, what, what's, the, what's the negativity there? Because they're using it to sell more cars, or like. The, the negativity isn't well. See, the thing is now that, that that I think them using Drake is cultural appropriation too. Because hey, let's go get Drake. Yeah, let's go I, get Drake. Let's, I, let's yeah, put why not? So like, we can get this. People are so we like, can get like, this let's certain, go get a superstar. Let's go get. A, let's get somebody nice from the culture so that we can yeah, get this it's, culture it's to, to, to buy smart. our car. Yeah, but now right, all you're doing is we're not all you're doing is describing an economy. What economy? Exactly. The economy uh, was built off of cultural appropriation. Yeah, but that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's not always a negative connotation. So I'm saying, in, in the example of like Toyota, America being built off of cultural appropriation is very negative connotation. I, I'm not saying it's not a negative connotation because the term itself has negative connotations. It's I'm saying, in the example of Toyota paying Drake a lot of money to use one of his songs in their commercial, benefits both the hip hop community and the Toyota driver community. Listen, because listen. Toyota sells more cars, but Drake also gets a lot of money. If I have money, right? If I have a lot of money, I see a little kid on the corner rapping, and I see a whole bunch of other kids coming around him rapping. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, oh, wow, I can make money off of that. I can, uh, I can do something with that. I don't know what that is, but I see that all this group of people are gravitating towards it. I'm going to put my money behind it, and blow it up for the benefit of myself, not for the benefit of the culture. I'm seeing dollar signs. I'm not seeing anything to benefit the culture, and I'm going to I'm going to implement all my own little rules and things like that to take away from the culture. That's why you got so many older rappers that's broke now because they didn't know business, and that particular um, company or whoever took advantage of the culture that didn't know. They you, you understand what I'm saying? Well, all right, for instance, like, example, uh, we'll continue with Drake because he's, like, super famous. But, like, Drake put out a song <laughs> called Big Rings, right? Uh -huh. and, and if you remember any of the lyrics of the song, he got some I really don't... big dreams to buy some really big rings because he got mm -hmm. really big teams. And all they're saying 
in that instance is that he, essentially he's trying to make enough money to provide rings for everybody that works under him. But you, you, you keep individualizing it to Drake. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. You can't I'm make more a culture on, an individual more on, thing. So, like, if you're talking about an example of me using a particular hip-hop song for a commercial, right? Then you're individualizing that person or that commercial. And you're saying, it can't be, I can't have it both ways. It's either an individual for this commercial or it's the culture in and of itself. And if I I'm using I, this one song by Drake, I'm not appropriating the whole culture of hip hop i'm taking this song and i'm using it as a business decision to move forward right? I, I i put it i never said that i never you use the example of drake i use the example of hip-hop itself as the genre of music itself as the culture of hip-hop itself when i invented when i when i when i started selling toyota I was using a certain type of music whatever type of music was hot whatever type of music i thought was the best for my marketing plan you understand, you understand what I'm saying? Well, now that I see that grab, maker, now that any, I see now that I see that people gravitate right? towards this type of music, I want that culture to participate into buying Toyotas. So I'm gonna start putting hip hop music into my uh, commercials because that I want that culture to start gravitating towards. I, I need to put this in my commercial so that that culture can buy Toyotas. That's culture appropriation. I mean, I'm all right, not, look, we, we ain't gonna be too hard on Toyotas. I got a beautiful Avalon, okay? Yeah. We ain't yeah, gonna I, be too I nothing, hard. I got nothing against them. I'm just like, for the <laughs> yeah, I don't have example. nothing against Toyotas. Yeah, I never I, owned one, but I have nothing against yeah, them. Yeah, I got nothing but against them. You, they we make just using them as cars. We just using nah, them nah, as nah, examples. I'm playing. I'm playing. But what, what I'm saying, somebody, we lost somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah, Triple A had to jump mm -hmm. off. And if either of you need to jump off, we'll respect your time accordingly. We also like to give you last last word of the show, King. Um, so if if you just, you know, or deciding you want to cut it close or you need to cut it off soon, you just let me know. We'll give you the last word and we'll jump out. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go I'm, soon, too. I make okay. my own time. I'm good. I'm good. Heard that. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, essentially, I, I don't, like, as far as taking someone's culture or using someone's culture to, to benefit themselves, in the example of Toyota using hip-hop, for instance, like, I'm not saying that's not an example of cultural appropriation. I'm just not seeing how it's a negative one. Because all you're doing is you're benefiting the particular artist and potentially spreading hip hop to people that may not usually get it. And that that owner of, you know, for instance, that music or that song, whoever they use for that genre, is probably going to get paid a butt ton of money. So, like, in that instance, like, you're saying it's typically a negative thing and it has negative connotations. I don't disagree with any of that. What I'm saying is, in the instance or occurrence of Toyota using a specific song no matter the genre, be it hip hop or anything else, that individual is not the only, like Toyota is not the only one benefiting here. So I'm curious, like where the negative connotation comes in, where are we using that? And where are we getting it at? Because it seems to me like in that situation, you have an artist who's going to benefit from Toyota's use of their song. And then people that potentially have never heard or don't typically listen to it are going to get exposed to it, which may further expand that hip hop artist, you know, uh, you know, fame, if you will. And then you have Toyota making money because there's now selling Toyotas to people they've never sold Toyota to. But you also have this artist making money selling albums to people they would have never bought the album before. You, you comparing you comparing millions to pennies. I mean, you comparing you millions think, to pennies. You think in a, yes, in an yes, yes, of yes, a yes, yes. I will give <laughs> yes, yes. I will give the culture a few pennies so that I can make millions. Yes, they they individually that small. I mean, could you artist blame, could you that, blame that the artist or that? record label? That artist or record label may make a few dollars. Yes, they're making money for the work that they're putting in for us, but we're making billions off of something that we're using that particular genre of music to make billions. So we're we're not we're not we're not we're not. It's not benefiting the culture at all. Well, I mean, How is that benefiting the culture? That's benefiting Drake as, a, as an individual. But it's not. It's not. But he would say he's a culture. part of the culture, right? Yeah, but it's not benefiting the culture. He is not the culture itself. But would his, would his song benefit the culture? Everything in this world is part of a certain of, of a culture. Well, so it's, but you just said song it's may not, not even be part the culture, of the culture, but everything like so uh, like it kind of seems again we're playing both sides of the fence here. Would Drake's song in the example of that be be, be beneficial to the culture of hip hop? In what way? I, in any way, because you just keep using the term beneficial. 
I would say Drake's putting his song in a Toyota <laughs> commercial <laughs> it wouldn't be beneficial to the culture. That I, not that I, not no, that. I'm not talking about it going into a commercial. I'm talking about Drake making the song. It could be, it could be beneficial. It also could be not beneficial. Okay, because so because his influence, we whether his influence he could have a negative. Certain things that he say in the song could have a negative influence on certain people. Okay, so how Correct? would we determine whether it was beneficial to the culture or not? It's beneficial to whoever invents it or creates it or is using it um, for monetary or for um, for financial or for any type of gain that they're using it for. Right, I'm with you there. But how can we determine? whether it's beneficial to the culture or not. So how could we determine whether a Drake song is going to be beneficial to the hip hop culture? I know I, I, I would, I wouldn't say that it would, I would say that a Drake song would be very beneficial to Toyota's commercial. No, no, no. Yes. I'm not asking about a Toyota. <laughs> I'm not talking about a Toyota commercial right now. I'm talking about in general, Drake drops a new song, right? He puts out a song tomorrow. How do we know whether it's going to be beneficial to the culture of hip hop or not, whether Toyota does anything with it or not, it's irrelevant. We're not even like bringing them in the same t- conversation. Drake's mm-hmm. dropping a new song tomorrow. Is it going to be beneficial to the hip hop community? If so, how do we know that? Um, I don't know. We don't know. Okay, so in, in we don't what know. way? What way could we determine that that's going to be beneficial to the culture? Um, say like a. Uh... Who did the song? Who did the? Uh, I would say. Would you say like the? Are you familiar with the "We Are the World"? We are the world song. Yep. Huh? Yeah. Would you say that that song was beneficial to a specific culture, I or was it beneficial to? Era, probably. Was it? Was it? Was it beneficial to the to the human being? Well, if you grew up in a certain era, it'd probably be more beneficial. But like, if you grew up probably five or six years after I was born, you probably don't even know what the song is. But I'm saying it, when when that song came out, would you say that that song benefited a certain culture or uh, a certain a certain amount of culture? I mean, it, it definitely impacted the people that made the song and it probably impacted their direct community and or family. But like when you say, does it impact an entire community or culture? I don't know because I don't know how influential, how influential it was to that specific group. Oh, it was very influential to a, a large so number. A, a lot of people, right? But not exactly. necessarily exactly. a specific group, right? Exactly. I don't know any Drake song that made an impact like We Are The World did. Okay. But like nonetheless, you would say that Drake is an influential hip-hop artist? Very influential, yes. Okay. And would you say that Drake has a established point in the community? Certain the communities. Community? Certain communities. Would you say that Drake has provided benefit to the culture of hip hop? Hater. I couldn't. I couldn't really. I, I can't really. I can't really say that. I can't say he has. I mean, I, can, to be you, honest, me, I can't really say he has. Specific artist. I haven't been. Did. I have me myself, and I'm individualizing myself. I have never benefited from a Drake song. Okay, but can you give me a? So oh, I can't say if it, I can't say if hip hop has benefited from um, Drake's music at all. I can't say that. Hey fellas, hold on real quick. Yeah. I gotta get out of here, yo. This has been a great debate, great topic as always. Y'all do an amazing job, but I gotta log off. I got some other business I gotta take care of. My phone is going crazy right now. You so, go use the, right. just say you gotta go use the bathroom, man. Just just say. <laughs> No, I, I just this, sit here and go on myself. Uh, oh my bad. I can't, I can't. <laughs> let, let me not beat. Let me not beat this way on on their podcast. Okay, that's <laughs> that, that's reserve our podcast. Okay. <laughs> All right, fellas. I'm gonna talk to y'all later, man. All right, man. I'll talk to you later, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Did you I, can give you give me a specific example uh, of? an artist since we've been talking about hip hop a lot that benefited the hip hop community or the hip hop culture. We could say Tupac. Okay. All right. Let's go with Tupac. I know who Tupac is. I listened to a lot of Tupac growing up. Okay. Right. Cool. In what way did he benefit the hip hop culture? Um, I'm just going to go, I can't go on the culture stuff, but, a lot of a lot of things that Tupac talked about and a lot of his poetry and a lot of his teaching, he had a lot of teaching moments in his song. You can feel you can feel a lot of music that he's saying because a lot of people can relate to a lot of things that he was talking about in the song. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and this is the reason why I don't use Drake is saying that a lot of people, um, that me, myself, I can't speak on a lot of people, but as far as the culture, because um, you have a lot of rappers these days that talk about a lot of things that a lot of people that I know can't relate to. You understand what I'm saying? We can't relate to dry, uh, to jumping in and out of a Maybach. We can't relate to having fifty to a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars on our neck. You understand what I'm saying? The things that Tupac talked about, we can relate to, and a lot of things helped us through a lot of times, um, and it benefited us in that way. You know what I mean? We felt like somebody was speaking to us that lived through or that was going through what we was going through at the time. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was therapeutic to a lot of people that I know and talk on a lot of people, you know what I mean? It was therapeutic to a lot of, especially a lot of people that I talked to that were in prison and have been to prison and things of that nature. You understand them? Or grew up in the hood. Sure. So uh, in that case, if, like you would say, that impacted the entire hip hop culture, right? Maybe not the entire, because you have, small you have a lot of people that didn't like Tupac. You still had a lot of people that didn't like Tupac or didn't listen to his music as well. So we can't say hip hop is a culture, but I would say, uh, the culture of hip hop was definitely benefited by Tupac's music. Okay. So could you give me an example of me being able to culturally appropriate specifically Tupac? Or like what Tupac did for a community or the hip hop community? Or... Be more specific. Like, is there something that I could do right now that would be cultural appropriation of Tupac himself. No, because Tupac himself is not considered a culture because he's an individual person. Right. But if I rapped, would you say that that was cultural appropriation if I took my If you rapped if, if, if you rapped if you rapped then I would say that you were part of the hip hop culture because you're you're performing one of those elements that is part of the culture. So I would so, say you were But what about part of hip -hop culture. What about Vanilla Ice? He rapped. You you but you say he wasn't part of the hip hop culture. Vanilla Ice rapped after he he rapped for, for the specific benefit of benefiting himself. And what if I not, rap specifically not to benefit, to benefit myself? Like if I found out that I'm okay at it and I can make some money rapping, what if I did that? But you yourself said that you. How much rap music do you listen to? Is that is that the predominant um, genre of music that you listen to? That depends on the day, because most days that's, that's it's like it. you know I listen to a different genre. Most days you know. I always, I, 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 I always, I always learned that when you ask a person a yes or no question and they answer other than yes or no, <laughs> that they uh, really don't uh, want to answer the question. I mean, real, real short answer is I listen to a lot of rap, but I listen to a lot of music in general. So the answer is probably no, but I still listen to a lot of rap. Like that, that's, but, that's a really hard answer. So, but that's not the answer. predominant, but that's not the predominant music genre of music that you listen to. No, nah, I typically listen to like right. classical. Do you do you know how to break dance? Uh, probably not. Nah, nah. I'm gonna just go. Do with you that. do graffiti? Uh, in in the sense that like I go out and tag buildings. I have before. Is do you do that on a regular basis? Uh, Is that your thing? N n no. Then you would you consider yourself part of the hip hop culture? Like pro probably not, because I don't contribute. To okay, the so. Culture. Being but that you I don't rap, consider yourself be contributing okay. to it, yeah, yeah. Once you start rapping, yes, but, but I'm only doing it you, for my benefit. But listen, listen, exactly. So if you're only doing it for your benefit, for your benefit, or to benefit your culture, and y'all are not part of that culture, then yes, that is culture appropriation by definition. Okay, but like I know a bunch of people that rap that have never tagged anything in their whole life. They don't go out and do graffiti. You don't have to do. You don't have to. You don't have to be involved in every single element of so the culture. Why can't I just be involved in rap and be part oh, of Oh, you can, you can, you can rap all you want to. Well, so, like, that's I'm what, not saying you can't, so, but like, if you say that, if you say, if, like, but if you say that I'm solely rapping, I haven't, I didn't grow up in a culture. I haven't been doing this my whole entire life. I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm going to do this solely for the purpose of making money. And I'm not going to give back to that culture. And I'm not, uh, and I didn't, Maybe this hip hop might be a bad example to be honest, but since we're on hip hop, 
Yeah. I, you see, the if problem I'm is, not, like, you're not, not, not going to come up culture. with a really you, good example if you can't use yeah, hip-hop. You admit, right? yeah, you admit it yourself that you're not part of the culture, but if, if you're not part of the culture and you use the culture for just so your soul benefit and it's not benefiting the culture at all, that is cultural appropriation. Mm, I, I would agree. Okay, by, so, by so how about this? So, how about this? Go ahead. How about this? So let, let's say Migos, they're using the Versace name solely for the benefit like of themselves. Like No, they make, use the Versace music. name because they wear Versace and they like Versace clothes and yeah. Versace benefits and Versace has benefited from them using the Versace name because his, they've got a whole lot of younger generation people who didn't know anything about Versace to now start buying Versace and to and to see Versace as a style. And and, sure. and 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 a culture in itself. You understand and, what I'm saying? So sure, but Versace you have a lot of people. From, Versace benefited from the Migos using their name, so sure, that would be considered lot, cultural appropriation. But you had a lot of people that started out listening to Vanilla Ice, and then through that transition to maybe Tupac and Ice Cube, and you know, and Wu Tang and everything else, right? So. Who did that? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm, 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 sure I'm, just, I'm just joking. I, I, I I'm probably joking. give you specific names. I won't, but I probably I'm just could. Uh, because I, I grew up in a, you know, a, a different world. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I mean, I know people that wouldn't listen to people like Tupac or NWA or, or anything like that, mainly because of skin color. But they would listen mm. to people like Vanilla Ice. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh, wait. There's people that do this better. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if I could point out specific people that actually kind of had that journey of, I started out listening to Vanilla Ice, who, you know, has no historic background of rapping and, you know, just did it to try to make some money. Uh, see, but that turned into some, like, rap heads, you know? See, but this is why I call Vanilla Ice a good example for culture appropriation because vanilla ice was put in front of the masses for that very reason we want i want to get another specific group of people or another specific um um generation or um just people in general maybe white people let's use white people i want white people i want to use vanilla ice to get white people to listen to rap okay that was the purpose of putting vanilla ice in the place where he was I'm going to put a white rapper out there. I'm going to put a white rapper out there so that we have a shining night, a, a shining night. And now all the white people that are going to spend money on rap or going to, it's going to take away money from all the other rappers out there. But oh, it, but it's oh, going to blow my company up because let, let me let me let me pause you right there. If I never listen, I I'm to not that, turning it into I'm not turning this into a race thing. I'm no, turn, no, no, I'm, no, no, no. It's, it's not I'm that actually. It's, it's not even yeah. going that way. I promise. Uh, yeah. If I didn't listen to rap. Right. And someone introduced me to Vanilla Ice. And then I went and bought Vanilla Ice's album. How did that take money away from Tupac? Because I never listened to rap before. I wouldn't know what Tupac was. So it's not like I'm gonna go out and buy Tupac's album because I'm like, yo, I heard this it was, you know, was fire. It was I've never heard of Tupac. How am I gonna go buy his album? So you've introduced me to something that I've never heard before. And I was like, oh, this is kind of enjoyable. I go out and I buy the album so I can listen to it my own time, which expands my own view of music into other rap communities, maybe Tupac, which may then turn into making somebody, whoever the heirs of Tupac's fortune is, into wealthier people because now I'm buying albums that Tupac made. So if I've never heard of rap and you introduce me to Vanilla Ice... And I go out and buy a Vanilla Ice's album. I didn't take anything away from Tupac. Neither did you. Neither did anyone else in that transaction. All I've done is potentially open you up, or like all I have has been opened up to a potential new style or genre of music that I've never heard before. Well, what was that? The purpose of Vanilla Ice. I, I was, mean, like, was that he, the purpose? His purpose was, was that the purpose? To make money, which what, is what, what most people's. What, was that the are. purpose of? Was that the purpose of introducing Vanilla Ice into the culture? I mean, I'm not sure there was like some singular purpose of introducing Vanilla Ice. Oh, there was. There was. I mean, you, you don't. You don't it's think people may, have had, it's people may have had different reasons? Okay, it's so, documented. This so, is all documented. So, so everybody that was a part of uh, Vanilla Ice's career when they pushed them and put them out there, they had this one singular purpose, and it was to 
do something that I mean, was tantamount to cultural I can tell you that's very unlikely given that he straight up ripped off the beat to under pressure by Queen, which was predecessor to Vanilla Ice by twenty years. So and that person the person that wrote that probably didn't even know or care about hip hop in any way. You have to I mean, you know that Vanilla Ice, like the most famous song Ice Ice Baby was straight up like they sued the pants off the dude. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. The, I'm, the I'm, baseline I'm, yeah. for under pressure by Queen. Exactly. That's that's a that's that's that even add, that and add, that adds even more to my argument. <laughs> In what because, way? Because it takes away from it being a, a perpetuation of hip hop towards white people. Because that definitely wasn't the purpose of creating that baseline or beat. Because Queen was not by any means hip hop. Well, any any most of the beats that's in hip hop or just um, all created from different samples of uh, different types of genre of music anyway. So, so you, you know, hip -hop... culturally appropriating their beats. No. What, why no. not? They're using it for their own purpose to make their own money to expand their own. Because, culture. No, because in order in in, in in order to use a sample, um, ninety nine percent of the time you have to pay for that sample. And what about that one percent that doesn't? Are they culturally appropriating? The one percent that doesn't are just the ones that don't touch the sample and go to claim it. But I guarantee you, anyone that has the money to claim that sample and know that that's their sample and they own that sample goes after that money. I mean, so but but sometimes the, there's no one to like to pay royalties to. Like for for instance, like let's say like a uh, a white girl braids her hair and like African braids, mm -hmm. right? So there, there's she's not going to be able to go to anyone and pay to get you know pay to. To braid her hair in that way, I mean, see, I but that's see, see, but I seen that used as I seen that used as an example of cultural appropriation as well. I don't see that as cultural appropriation. I don't see okay. a white a, a white female or a Chinese female, um, or I mean Asian, not Chinese, or an Asian female that braids their hair up, mm -hmm. cult, uh, being cultural appropriated. I, I don't see that. I don't see that as, as a good example because. We all cut our hair. We all wear beards. Okay, we but, all use a certain bro, product or anything. I'm talking like about. That. I mean, sure, you can have like French braids, which definitely isn't. I'm, ta I'm talking about specifically African braids, like they're having in a way that like West African women wear. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like my wife, she braids her hair. She and she look. I mean, she looks kind of African anyway. But like she, mm -hmm. like you, bra she she braids it like like an African would do it. Like uh, let's say a white girl does that. You, you wouldn't consider that cultural appropriation. No. No, really? No, okay, I so see that as like, like I see that as like I see that as liking a certain style and thinking that my hair is going to look good in that style right, and just so putting it in that style. I don't see that. There's a, I know a lot of white I, I know I have white friends that break dance, so okay, I don't know. I don't consider that. No, no, dancing is dancing. Then why is Vanilla I <laughs> You know what he raps. And then why is rap like? I don't get the exception. I'm just confused cool. now. Uh, I think y'all y'all are miss y'all are missing my point for the sake of an argument. I think no, I, I think no, no, it's no, all in a circle. I, I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, I, okay. I genuinely like want to to kind of explore this and like figure out exactly where the line is drawn because it kind of seems like the more we talk about it, it's like, oh, maybe hip hop's not a perfect example to use for a cultural appropriation. And it's because I keep pushing back on this and I keep giving you examples of like things that happen in the hip hop culture that you would say, oh, that's not cultural appropriation. Even some of the things specifically that you said were part of the culture of hip hop, right? And so to me, it seems like if we keep kind of moving the target, that maybe the target isn't all as stable as you think it might be. And which I don't deny cultural appropriation is taking the culture from someone else. I'm really just trying to get to the point of like negative connotation with it and saying, why is it a bad thing that, for instance, Vanilla Ice rap? Like, is it a bad thing in which, I mean, he admittedly took an art form that he didn't create. He took a beat that he didn't make. <laughs> like, in every sense, he stole it. But what happened in the long term was it may have introduced more people to rap, which may have sold more rap albums to people that didn't traditionally listen to rap music. So I'm trying to get, like, where the negative side of it comes from in, it, in the sense that, you're talking about an entire culture or an entire community that mm -hmm. gets impacted. And it, it's in this specific instance, at least, it's not taking anything away from them for me to get introduced to Vanilla Ice because I didn't listen to that kind of music anyway. 
Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm I'm the 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 rap community or the hip hop community is gonna lose money because I got introduced to Vanilla Ice because I wasn't listening to rap before Vanilla Ice. That's not my actual case, but like for the sake of argument, um, versus like I can borrow a sample of music and it's not cultural appropriation, or I can borrow this idea and improve upon it and it's not cultural appropriation. It seems like it's kind of a moving target that's hard to hit. So that's why I was trying to give like get, get you to give like specific examples of like a negative connotation of cultural appropriation, like not a negative connotation, but a negative occurrence because of cultural appropriation. Because although the connotation and like stealing stuff from other people is wrong, you're not essentially you're not benefiting an individual is benefiting from an entire culture or community, but the same could be said for an individual that comes out of that culture or community. So for instance, like Drake in the instance of hip hop, like he's using that and he may have grown up that way and he may have used that, but it's, it's all to benefit Drake and his bankroll. Drake's worth Mm -hmm. about $300 million. You would say that like, maybe the average person in the hip hop community isn't worth $300 million. (laughs) Just like if I started rapping, I might not be the very typical like rap community, hip hop community artist, but I might inspire somebody in the future or I might turn people on to other forms of rap or other rappers. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to say like, it's all negative content. Like it's not just connotation. In fact, that it is negative. The definition itself is very vague by definition um, and can't really be specified to a certain um, let's see, to a certain, I mean, I don't know, you keep, I, I think you keep individualizing it as far as with, when you say Drake and when you say Vanilla Ice or anything like that. I use Vanilla Ice as an example because I use Vanilla Ice as not Vanilla Ice itself. I use it as the record company or the people that put the money behind Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice could have still, could have been rapping before he started um, in the industry or before he was signed or anything like that. He could have very well been. Even if he was that, that wouldn't be. I wouldn't consider him cultural appropriation in a sense. But the record label or the company that put the money to back him, when they could have put the money on somebody that was better or that was already rapping, but they put it for that specific reason because I want to get this group of people to listen to rap or to listen to this type of rap. That is cultural appropriation. Right. I'm not. They didn't know any. Again, I don't disagree with it. You understand what I'm saying? Appropriation, but I'm curious. Like, other than being negatively connotated, did it negatively impact the hip hop community or that culture, the hip hop culture? And if so, like, what what specific ways was it negatively impacting the hip hop culture? Because again, I can point to those examples of like I probably genuinely can point you to people who grew up probably started on vanilla ice and then turned into kind of hip hop heads, if you will. Because if I, because if I have the money and the manpower, if I own the, if I own the labels and I have the distribution, I am the distributor, I own the labels and I have the money to back an artist. We know that back, back in the beginning, not back in the early stages of hip hop, whoever had the most money to do the most marketing, to push the most, to push their artists, the furthest, that's who named, that's who. That's how the artists climb the charts. You understand what I'm saying? That's a lot of times it wasn't. Even, yeah, no, no, it's different now because a lot of people can put out their own music via YouTube, sure, TikTok, anything like that. Sure, it's not controlled. Think, it's not. You, it's not controlled by a certain culture of people. Well, but when you, you think of saying? like popular let's, let's, let's say, artists today, you are automatically think of people that are undoubtedly the wealthiest hip hop artist. When you think of that's like not true. People, uh, yeah, that's, sure. that's not true. Sure. Like when you walk out on the street and you listen, like listen to the radio, listen to the top 100, you automatically hear people like Drake. You automatically hear people like, you know, I mean, like, yeah. the, the, like that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's just one of those things. Like, I hate to beat on Drake. I don't really have an opinion of him. It's just that like when you put out an album and your song, like 15 out of 18 songs hit number one on the billboard and you don't think he's the number one marketed rapper in the world. I, I no, mean, I'm not saying he. I'm not saying. I'm not saying he isn't. I'm saying I'm going by. I'm going by what went in the Vanilla Ice era, right? You had MC Hammer out there who was highly marketed. Once, once Vanilla Ice came out, we said we need somebody. We're gonna. This, 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 this culture is growing. This culture of rap is growing. We need to put somebody out that can take. 
the attention off of what's going on over here. And we're going to put all these dollars behind it to market it to a point where we can garner or we can we can benefit off of this culture that we had no idea about, but we see the benefits of it. So we're going to put our money behind it now, but we're going to put our own shining night out there. I didn't want to say shining white night, but we're going to put our own shining. You want to? We're going to put our own shining night out here to benefit and to take away from what is going on over here. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to try to we're tr- we're going to try to wash out the competition. You know what I mean? With this, yeah, I mean, like, with this person I, that we're going to push, we're going to put the money behind. So, I, you know, I don't, and I that's don't what was done. That it, it like can and probably is done in that sense, uh, pretty much across the board where you have like large corporations and large organizations basically saying that I'm going to throw more money into this to essentially like eradicate the competition. But that's done with cars, it's done with music, it's done with individual. Yeah, artists. exactly. Exactly, um, and, I, and I don't think that in any sense that I would deny that a lot of times that is cultural appropriation. I'm just saying the negativity isn't the cultural appropriation itself. It's the methodology or the, the ideology that's done behind these big moves and culture. So, like, w- what I'm saying is the negativity is actually not Vanilla Ice going to be a rapper. It's the people that try to push him to essentially get other black rappers out of the limelight exactly exactly so exactly like, in the sense of him rapping there's nothing wrong with it it's just that if you're promoting his rap specifically to try to get other like black artists out of the limelight then you're kind of a racist asshole <laughs> true that's so, true like but true. in and of itself him rapping isn't taking anything away from the hip-hop culture no, and no, so I didn't like, say him rapping. Yeah, I never, I never put it on Vanilla Ice as an individual. Right, but that's I put what I'm it on like, the people that really was behind to, him. Like yeah. disparage the a culture as a whole. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's really easy to kind of like pinpoint specific examples, which is kind of what we've done throughout like this whole topic back and forth. Yeah. Is that like True. when we talk about like a specific example of someone, then we have to like, oh, well, what about like the person that inspired them and the person that wrote the song and the person that did this and the person that did that. And so like, you have to realize that like it takes an army to kind of like put some of this stuff together. But if the intention, which I would say like is really hard to define for most people and most people don't put out stuff specifically for their culture. Most people do it with aspirations in mind or because for instance, you could talk about like some of the older, like, uh, style rap where they were talking about things they did on the daily where it mm-hmm. wasn't they were writing because they wanted to like show the culture anything it was because they were doing it because they were telling their own story right and yeah. people might relate to that story and that's part of the culture but they weren't doing it to necessarily benefit the culture they were doing it trying to make a dollar you're right so, i'm not i'm not disputing that i'm not disputing that at all i'm not disputing that at all but by definition, and I keep going back to definition because, you know, like I said, I have my own understanding and definition sure. of it. I really don't. Even, I, I'm just going by definition. Sure. If if we are a group of people, let's say. I, I, I don't want to keep it on race. That's, that's let's right. keep it on hip hop. Sure. I have a rap group. We are we are a rap group. We've been rapping for years and years and years. You understand what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Until you have a record label, you you and your group have a record label, your team, you have a team. Your team didn't think about rap at no point in time. And y'all were doing music for years and years and years at a time, right? You knew about rap, but you wasn't thinking about rap until you seen that it was beneficial for you. And you did whatever you could do. You put your money behind it to use rap to benefit you because you seen that you can make money off of it, even though you have no intention on using it to benefit the culture at all by definition that's what what that that's what that would be by definition that will be cultural appropriation that will be if i'm gonna you've been selling hamburgers and you invented the hamburger or you've been your your group or your specific uh um uh group of people have been eating hamburgers in a certain style grilling them how are y'all how are y'all prepare them you know what I mean? I see that y'all prepare them in this way. I see that I can make money off of it. I take that idea from you. I industrialize it. I don't give you any benefits of it. I don't give you recognition for it. I don't give you any money for using that idea or anything like that. 
that would be considered cultural appropriation. You know what I mean? So that's 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 how I see it. That's where I, that's how I see it by definition. You yeah, know what I mean? It's not an individual thing. I, I agree. I, I was just trying to get, get kind of more into the, the like beyond the the negative context. That, that would yeah. More that would that would. See, but that's the negative context of it is that I'm stealing something. I'm taking something from a group and not giving them recognition for it. Yeah, but like, then they're not benefit off of what I'm doing. Well, so like for instance, in the in the example of a group, it's really hard to give like specific kudos. So for instance, like, would you say you individually are part of the hip hop culture? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say I'm part of the hip hop. I listen to hip hop. Okay. I listen, to, I, but I listen to R and B more than I listen to any, I, more than I listen to rap. Okay. Would you now, say, now R and B is considered kind of hip hop. Yeah, because he he's, he's he does hip hop music. Okay, so let's say Drake, for example. Let's say I never heard a song by Drake before. All I've done mm-hmm. in my whole life, I've listened to Tupac growing up. Okay, mm-hmm. but Drake is, you would say, a, a a part of the hip hop culture as well as Tupac. We already established he was right. So if I grew up listening to nothing but Tupac, I've never heard a Drake song in my whole life. And then I'm like, yo, Pac is such a good rapper and he tells a story and I I feel a certain way when I listen to his music and I Mm -hmm. really like the way the lyrics speak and it's part of the way he grew up. And I really like to do that. And I I try to emulate Tupac by rapping. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I say like, I want to become part of this, this, this ideal of like, I want to be a rapper. I want to inspire people. I want to tell my story just like Tupac did. Mm -hmm. Does Drake deserve any credit for me becoming a rapper? If you're influenced by Drake, but I've never listened to Drake. Oh, if you never listened to Drake. No, no. I don't okay. give you no. So so like how do I go about giving an entire culture kudos for me becoming a rapper? Because Drake had nothing to do with it. But you would say he's a part of the hip hop culture, whereas Pac was my only inspiration in that example. So that's why it's really hard to say like, oh, the entire culture deserves some sort of credit or responsibility. Because culture means that like people might have the same ideology or they may have the same way of life. But if but and if but if one but if 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 a part of that culture influenced you to want to become a part of that culture, then that itself is giving it re- recognition. You understand what I'm saying? If you're saying that Tupac, even though he's not the whole the whole culture, but Tupac is part of the hip hop culture itself. If Tupac influenced you to want to be part of that culture, then yes, the culture influenced you to self and you will be given recognition to the culture for the influence, but, but even though it was just Drake, Tupac so individually. Why, why should he get any credence for my, my becoming a rapper? Because it's I not him individually getting him. His, 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 Drake individually is not getting any credence. It's the, the culture of hip hop itself is getting okay, it. But the, the, would, the would, would Drake then benefit from it? If y'all do a song together, <laughs> so, like, <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, I don't know. You see where I'm going with I that? I don't know. It's just, it's, it's I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're. I understand what you're trying to say. But benefit doesn't necessarily have to be uh, uh, um, uh, financial or I, anything I like agree. that. I agree. But like, in, if if Tupac is the sole responsibility of my becoming a rapper because that's all I've ever listened to, then to say an entire community deserves kudos or credence for my becoming a rapper is a, a bit of a stretch of the imagination. Now, I'm not saying that Tupac isn't a huge part of the hip-hop community or that Drake isn't a part of one. I'm just saying that when you get into these specific nuances and you say, like, oh, this is part of the hip-hop community, but this isn't, you're really, really careful about splitting hairs that I don't think you necessarily should be. Instead, I think you should take the the and i hate to use the term because i think it, and i'm gonna be really frank i think it's a, a white person invented term to steal things from other cultures uh is mm. cultural appreciation where mm. i appreciate something or some part or some production of the culture so much that it inspires me to do it now my mm. end game might be different and i might be a jerk just trying to make money there's no way to know that without you know like knowing all about what I'm doing it for and how it came about and all this other stuff. But on the face of things, 
it might be beneficial to the culture as a whole because it could inspire others to listen to additional music put out by that culture or it might mm-hmm. inspire other people to become part of the culture in different ways or methods like i put out a song that people like create this really cool dance to and like all of a sudden is a dance it's not even a song anymore so like what i created was inspired by tupac which turned into a dance which turned into this youtube short that now a community is benefiting from from tupac Mm -hmm. that i had you know i wrote a new song based off of it but the song didn't matter it was just it was a cool dance song and the dance Mm -hmm. became so influential that you know like see what i'm saying like it's just a a, yeah yeah play on a play on a play so that's just kind of where i was going with it see i would I, i wouldn't consider somebody that's influenced by something that wants to do something because they're influenced by it um as 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 appropriating you know, you understand what I'm saying? You're influenced I mean, like, by it. It's something, that you, of, like, it's something that you love to do. But even it's something in the case that you of like Vanilla do. Ice, he's getting influenced by money makers. You know what I'm saying? Like he's doing it because there's an influence. He's doing it because people recognize the influence of hip hop in the industry. And what they're doing is capitalizing on that, which I'm not saying is good or bad in and of itself. The way you capitalize on it might be good or bad, but it is marketing 101. And people are going to utilize and capitalize upon that no matter who gets offended or whatever in the process. And so it, it seems like maybe the issue isn't cultural appropriation itself, but the manner in which people use culture to benefit only themselves instead. That's that's pretty much what it is. That's it's pretty much what it is. Like I said, it's so vague in yeah. definition that it could be it could be um tagged on a lot of different things it could be sure. applied to a lot of different things and, and a lot of different cultures to be honest because when you look at culture itself it, you know, when you look at culture itself there's so many different ways of life out there now and every, each one takes from the other you know what I mean and benefits off of it and um uh, 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 improves on it so you know you know and that's why I have a. That's why I have a different understanding of what of, of it. It's you know what it is. Yeah. My examples are the understanding that I have of it as far as by definition. You you know what I mean? Because that's the only thing I really have to go on. <laughs> so, sure. Uh, yeah. So I mean, we've we've been at it almost two hours now. I want yeah, to yeah. be respectful of your time, and I have some things that are coming up soon. I would like to give sure. the last word of the show. If you'd like to promote anything, you're now the person on screen. Uh, so if there's anything you want to promote, anything you want to say, anything you want to wrap up, the floor is yours. You can take as long as you'd like. When you're done, the call is going to be over. Yep. I appreciate y'all having me on, man, and, and you know, and talking with y'all. I hope y'all to have me on again. Also, I would like to have y'all on our um, podcast, which is the King Glare podcast, um, New to Relic Media. And um, I appreciate y'all having us, you know, in the uh, Relic Media family. You know what I mean? Just check us out. You know, we got new podcasts coming up um, soon. As you see, I'm in the studio now, you know, working on some good content for y'all. So just check us out whenever we hit the scene. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on, King. Appreciate your Appreciate input. It, man. Hope we can Appreciate have you, you having on. Me, We'd love to have, come on yours. Definitely. That's something you guys Definitely. want to do. Definitely. Okay, I love it, man. Evening, man. I love it. You too, man. You too. Enjoy your night, man. Yep. See you, buddy. All right. All right.